Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Okay, starting your Saturday morning off. Oh my gosh, it is hot. It is humid. And there is a big 5K happening right across from our studios this morning. Good morning. David Sears is in for Max Massey, and today's a big day here. At today's Houston. a big day. We've got the 5K going on. I don't know about you, but uh, I was up this morning at one whatever celebrating the fact that it's fall. No, not really. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I know. The autumnal equinox happened overnight. What happened? What was the time? 1.50 in the morning. Wait, does that mean we're officially in, like, I know yeah. we're Autumn, yeah. meteorological we're fall. fall. We're in astronomical fall now. Like, it's it's, it's happening. It's happening. But it's not happening. No, 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 <laughs> not this weekend, because this weekend <laughs> we're going to be flirting with the triple digits, okay? It's going to be humid and hot all weekend long. Take a look outside right now, 79 degrees. Dew point at 75. Dew points are the highest they usually can be this time of year for us. And as uh, Sarah mentioned, we do have the head for the cure. 5k today uh, and guess what it's going to be very humid 78 degrees at 7 and by 9 81 by noon 91 hot and humid today highs are going to be right near 100 99 today 99 tomorrow heat index anywhere from 102 to 105 but there is hope for at least a chance for rain within the next 72 hours those details ahead for you coming up in just a bit david sarah Thank you, Sarah. We're going to start this morning talking about immigration. There are questions about how long those coming into San Antonio will actually stay here and where the city can support them. Avery Everett spoke to several migrant advocacy groups about what's next for those seeking asylum. Everybody deserves a chance. Fred Schellenberg says he's trying to take every phone call that he can. These are human beings. You know, it's just not numbers. Since the Biden administration gave some Venezuelans the chance to get temporary protected status, Schellenberg says his phones haven't stopped ringing. What we're trying to do is figure out a way to quickly help them apply for temporary protective status. This decision gives more than 200,000 migrants who arrived in the U.S. on or before July 31st the right to get work authorization without fear of deportation. It comes in a week where Texas has seen an influx of border crossings and in San Antonio, an overflow of asylum seekers waiting for their next step. I just, I can't see that the city of San Antonio is going to be able to uh, afford uh, the, the uh, this support for the long term. Another San Antonio advocacy group, the Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services, sent us this statement in part reading the quote, militarization and stricter asylum rules do not prevent people from seeking safety. Now, Schellenberg says the goal is to connect these asylum seekers with family or friends across the United States. But with such large numbers, he says there's going to be a delay. What are they going to do if they don't have somebody they can I just live with? Schellenberg says the process could be simple, using San Antonio as a stepping stone. But the system is overloaded, and he can't speculate how soon until it slows down. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, the city has reported at least 700 migrants sheltering here daily, and that jumped more than 1,000 people just this last week. The San Antonio Food Bank helping feed migrants who come to the Migrant Resource Center. But as Patty Santos learned, that's becoming a community effort as well. Where some see a group of migrants, Mariano and Esperanza Trevino say, they saw hungry faces, and that was enough to convince them to take action. In a matter of seconds, snacks, drinks, and few clothing items they brought to the parking lot across the street from the Bank Grand Resource Center on San Pedro were gone. We are human, so we, want, we like to help. It's a small gesture, but it means a lot to migrants who say they have relied on the kindness of many along their journey from South America. What does it mean for you to get this kind of help? Miles away on the west side. Each tray has about 100 wraps in them. Um, we have 4,000 ready to go. At the San Antonio Food Bank, dozens of volunteers help prepare thousands of meals daily to take to the resource center. Normally, we will produce about 3,400 meals for the migrant um, shelter. Um, that number has actually doubled. Um, so right now we're serving approximately 6,800 uh, meals. And the need continues to grow. Every day from 6 to 11 a.m., volunteers pack nutritious meals, not just for migrants, but for other organizations who help fill a need across San Antonio. 
I hope more than anything that they see and feel the love and the care that went into making those meals. The food bank is also accepting donations of travel size hygiene products, baby formula and new clothing. And we have information on where you can drop off those items on KSET.com. Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. Thank you, Patty. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson, a longtime Democrat, is now a Republican, turning Dallas into the largest city in the country with a GOP mayor. Johnson served in the Texas legislature for nine years as a Democrat before he was elected as Dallas mayor in 2019. So according to Johnson, one of the reasons he's making the change because he believes American cities are, quote, in disarray and Democratic leaders haven't made public safety a priority. Though the mayor's position is technically nonpartisan, Johnson joins Fort Worth Mayor Maddie Parker as one of two Republican mayors to lead a major Texas city. Back here in San Antonio, nonstop service to Europe has arrived here in San Antonio thanks to an airline that is probably unknown to most Texans. Starting next summer, German airline Condor will offer seasonal nonstop service between San Antonio International and Frankfurt Airport in Germany. Flights will be available from May 17th through September 6th. Flights to Frankfurt will take over 10 hours. It'll take almost 12 hours to come back to San Antonio. But no more headaches dealing with the George Bush Intercontinental Airport in Houston. You can read more about this story, including ticket prices on KSAT.com. This truck driver is now an honorary deputy after he rescued a family from scorching heat in Houston. HEB employee Mark Seller says he saw a couple with an infant whose car had broken down during rush hour several weeks ago. He says the heat index was over 100, and so he pulled over and let them cool off in his vehicle. I'm glad I was there. It was pretty emotional. It didn't hit me until uh, on my way home. The mother of the family said she was terrified something might happen to her infant. The, call, the father calls Sellers his hero. Today, our annual Head for the Cure 5K to raise money for brain cancer research. It is in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who passed away 10 years ago. Online registration closed, but you can still register this morning at Providence Catholic High School starting at 7. The race starts at 8. Every dollar raised going towards brain cancer research. So we hope to see you there. Also happening today, you'll be able to tell San Antonio ISD how you feel about its plan to close 19 schools. We told you about the plan earlier this week. Since it was announced, parents and teachers have been asking how the closures are actually going to work. So you can share your thoughts with the district today at 10 a.m. at Lowell Middle School. The district says it's going to hold several more community meetings in the next coming weeks. And University Health asking the public to roll up their sleeves. While it might, might not be flu season just yet, University Health is hosting a free Flu shot drive through event this morning starts at 8, runs till noon. All you have to do is go over to the Freeman Coliseum to get your shot. You're going to be out there for Head for the Cure. Oh, not, not for the shot. Not no. For, the head for, the <laughs> for cure, Head yes. for the Cure, you'll be out right there. Down the street, Providence. Yeah, you're going to be us. out there and you're going to come back. and. You don't have to walk. You don't have to run. You can just come hang out. There you go. You don't have to be athletic no. whatsoever. Just like David. Come on. Just hanging out. Just hanging out. <laughs> it's 608. Did she just said I wasn't athletic. Is that what she just said? I'm not it's athletic. 79. Oh, I know you're athletic, former quarterback. I know. Oh, okay. All right. I know. Careful there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So if you're heading out the door soon to meet us for Race for the Cure, we'll tell you about some road closures you may want to know about. So falls officially started, and I cannot wrap my head around that because it it's at 79 out there right now. It feels even hotter and it's only 612 in the morning, Sarah. Here's the thing. Our average high temperature this time of year is 88 degrees. Mm. That's where, well, we, there that's where the <laughs> average is. Oh, you're talking about like late in the afternoon. Yes, uh, exactly, David. It's going to be 99 degrees. Did we today. get to 99 yesterday or is it 98? Um, you know what? Be honest with you. Don't know. I need to check. It was my day off yesterday. <laughs> Girl. You, you deserve your day off. But okay? I do know we were hot <laughs> yesterday. For it was sure. hot. In the upper 90s, definitely. I just don't want to lead you astray. I'll check on that as soon as I can. Sorry. Well, then I could have told you that. It was hot. Hey, but it was hot. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's hot. talk about the fall equinox. How does that sound? Okay, yeah. Autumnal equinox officially happened last night, or this morning, rather, at 1.50 in the morning. That's when 
the uh, sun was directly over the equator. Now uh, the uh, northern hemisphere is going to continue to tilt away from the sun. Woo. So yes, woo, the amount of daylight will decrease after the fall equinox. And uh, again, we are tilting away from the sun. So the cooler weather is bound to happen. Just not this weekend. 99 today, 99 tomorrow. Hey, at least we see temperatures dip down into the low 90s by the middle of the week next week. So that's not too bad, uh, but we do have to get through this weekend again. The average high this time of year is 88, so we are well above that average. OK, take a look outside right now. It is 79 degrees and temperatures are only going to get hotter from here on out. Winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. There's going to be a bit of a breeze today. Good morning. In Kerrville at 74 degrees, 81 in Del Rio, 79 in Pleasanton, 81 already in New Braunfels, 78 in Gonzales, and 77 in Creso Springs. One thing to keep in mind, it is going to be downright humid all day today. Oftentimes we see humidity come down in the afternoon this time of year, but that is not going to be the case. It will be oppressively humid all day long, which means we are going to have a heat index value. As you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, by about 10, we're still going to be at 84 degrees. Remember how I said our average high is 88? We're going to be hotter than that by lunch, 91 at noon. And then in the afternoon, 99 for the high. We very well could reach 100 degrees for the 75th time this year, today and tomorrow. Hopefully not but it's going to feel like it anyway. 95 in Bernie, 95 in Bulverde. It'll be 97 in Kerrville, 100 in Castroville, 101 at Simpson, 100 in Seguin in New Braunfels, 101 in Floresville. But again, because the humidity will be high, it's going to be difficult for our bodies to regulate their, its heat. So the forecast heat index value 104 in San Antonio is going to feel like 107 in Floresville, 105 in Sabinal and 106 in Seguin. Let's take a look at the weather setup. There's that dreaded heat high. Nobody's favorite. It's moved right overhead, but there is some good news to our north. There's a low pressure system with a cool front. This is going to help to push that heat high away and even bring a small window of opportunity for rain. Now, chances are not great, only 40% on Monday, but that chance is there. So keep your fingers crossed if you need some rain and all of us need some rain. Otherwise, it is going to at least cool down a little bit in the week ahead. Still hot. Yes, highs are going to be in the 90s, still above average, but we're going to have less humidity. That means cooler mornings, comfortable mornings, and highs at least manageable in the low 90s. Hey, coming up, we've got a football games tonight. I'll show you the forecast for those football games, and we're going to talk a little bit about the tropics as well. There's a tropical storm that's going to be moving through the East Coast today. Glad the sun is, or we're finally tilting away from the sun. Exactly. That, it, it is happening. So it's it happening. will cool down. It will. It's just taking its time. I can't feel it, though. I can't either, David. It's not, I don't <laughs> feel the tilt. Whoa. Sorry you're not feeling that tilt. Six, we are. 16. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, we won't. Never mind. Hey. Go Runners! The new report shows that UTSA is the place to be. We'll take a look after the break. And welcome back. 19 minutes after 6 o'clock. We told you a few weeks ago what colleges in Texas are considered the most LGBTQ plus friendly. A new report shows which colleges are the most conservative. That's out now. The report comes from Nish.com. Southern Methodist University is considered the most conservative college in the state of Texas. Texas A&M comes in second and Dallas Baptist University is third. Currently, no San Antonio colleges are on that list. And big news for UTSA, the University at Texas at San Antonio has jumped 92 spots on U.S. News and World Reports list of best colleges to number 280. This is the most significant increase of all public universities and the second most of all colleges and universities among public universities on this year's list, UTSA ranks 151. So this might mean people from all over the world will come join the runner family. You think that has anything to do with their football team? Probably a little bit. Yep, just a little bit. Moved up the ladder. We'll see. I got a tough one today, too, in Tennessee, by the way. 620, 79 degrees. It's a beautiful day to come out for the head for the cure. But those roads aren't. We'll tell you what streets to avoid if you're heading out the door today. 
If you are hitting the road this weekend, get ready. More Loop 1604 closures starting. You may want to know if you are heading out. Cloverleaf ramp connecting eastbound Loop 1604 to eastbound Interstate 10 closed from now through 5 a.m. on Monday. Part of that closure, the eastbound Loop 1604 exit ramp for I-10 is going to be shut down. The second closure involves the westbound lanes of Loop 1604 from Lock Hill Selma to I-10 from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. each night starting Monday and running through Saturday, September 29th for a list of alternate routes. You might want to take a, like a screenshot of that right there. Right. That's, it gets kind of confusing after a while because there's so many road closures. But, you know, hey, if, a mess. if 37 is in your two or like route to and from work back to back Alamo Dome concerts could cause traffic chaos downtown this coming week. So we want to give you a heads up. More than 35,000 people are expected to catch pink. She's going to be in town this Monday and then Guns and Roses on Tuesday. And since the doors open for both concerts at 430 PM, a lot of ticket holders likely will hit downtown. Uh, rush hour via buses are an option for concert concert goers. So buses will run starting at 430 Monday and at 4 p.m. on Tuesday. We have more information, including alternate routes to avoid that downtown traffic on Monday and Tuesday. Also on our website. That is some serious artists right there. Back to back. Yeah. yeah. Pink and Guns N' Roses. Would you go to the Pink concert or Guns N' Roses? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Both. How about that? I would love to see David at a Pink concert. I would go see Pink. She's I, got a great voice. Yeah, she does. She could sing. <laughs> hey, it's uh, 625. Just give me a reason. Just a little bit. Oh, my gosh. 78 degrees. <laughs> see? Thank you. Got we'll, that we'll be right back. It is 630. It is Saturday, September 23rd, and it is fall. It is officially fall. the first. I, when Sarah told me this morning, I still couldn't believe that it's fall yesterday was 98 degrees. Today it's 79 right now, Sarah. But gosh, the humidity yes. is horrible. And being the being the meteorologist you are, I'm sure you got up at 1:50 a.m. <laughs> Celebrated. Did you go outside, fall. arms wide open? Welcome fall. Welcome I fall. was up at 1:50 in the morning. But you didn't celebrate fall. No, because I know it's going to be hot this weekend. <laughs> so there's not really much to celebrate right now as far as temperatures go. We're going to be close to 100 degrees. First, though, I do want to take a check of Tropical Storm Ophelia, which which is currently about to make landfall uh, along the North Carolina shoreline there. It's borderline a hurricane. I mean, if it strengthened just about four miles per hour, it would become a hurricane. But Ophelia is expected to weaken throughout the day over land uh, in uh, parts of North Carolina, Virginia, and into onto the Delmarva Peninsula by about tomorrow early in the morning. Uh, so um, the biggest concerns with Ophelia are mainly going to be flooding, flooding potential for areas from our nation's capital all the way down to the Carolina coast. So torrential rains and then yes, some gusty winds of 40 to 60 miles per hour possible. But it's a different story for us here in San Antonio. More of the same hot and humid 78 at seven o'clock this morning. By 10, it's going to be 84 by noon, right near 90, but it's already going to feel like 100 because of the high humidity this afternoon. 99 for the high feeling like 105. We're going to be close to seeing our 75th 100 degree day today uh, this year. I'll have a look ahead though. We do have a small chance for rain in, in the next 72 hours or so. Those details in just a few minutes. We will look forward to that. Thank you, Sarah. Today is the annual Head for the Cure 5K to raise money for brain cancer research. And we wanted to share a big part of why we here at KSAT are dedicated to this cause. We support Head for the Cure in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who died of brain cancer. So here are some of the ways we remember the man who led our team for so many years. First thing I think of when I'm asked to describe Jim Boyle. Good friend. Quality journalist. Incredible leader. Trustworthy. Passionate and tough. Dad. He was just really great and always so encouraging. This past summer I lost my dad and uh, in the process of, of dealing with that loss, I remembered how in grief I still am over the loss of Jim Boyle. I took Jim's death very hard, personally and professionally. When he left us, it, it obviously stung us. I worked with Jim for quite a few years, and you know it was very sad when, uh, when he was uh, stricken. 
uh, back in uh, 2013. He was a father figure to me. While my father was in Louisiana, I always had Jim. He genuinely cared about the people that worked for him. I remember him speaking to me about the balance between family and work. But also very truthful when it came to, to covering news. He always offered advice. But he would always have something to say about how I could improve, how I could be better. When you think of old school journalism, you think of Jim because he just personifies all of that. Jim was a awesome boss. And he was the ultimate news leader. He was one of the smartest journalists I've ever met. When he took over, we were fighting to, to be number two. And we finally worked our way up to be number one. And we, we stayed there and we, and we to this day we're still number one. But it was because of his leadership. The level of expectation that Jim expected. He was a very tough boss. He instilled hard work in us. Kind of like that tough football coach. He wanted me to be the best I could be. I know that so many of us who are still here uh, can thank Jim Boyle. I owe my career to Jim Boyle. I'm forever grateful for him for, for not only hiring me, but also helping me learn and grow. He literally taught me all that I know about reporting and journalism. Just I'm grateful for, for working for a guy like that. And we miss him. We miss him greatly, even now. You know, we all miss him here. He's greatly, greatly missed. But let me just say, Jim Boyle, thank you. Thank you for everything you did. We miss you here, Jim. I had the honor of being his first hire. Wow. He started here in July of 84 and hired me in August of 84. And you're still here? We're still here, yeah. So, and his memory lives with us. He is missed. We're going to be out there this morning. We're going to start at 8 o'clock. I'll be there emceeing the race. And it's not too late to join us. So you're able to register in person this morning at 7 in front of Providence Catholic School. That's right across the street from our KSAT studio. So then the 5K starts at 8. I'm sure you're going to be counting it down and leading the charge. Maybe not running, but on the microphone. I just stand there and fire off the horn so people can take <laughs> off. And then I go, wow, look at them all go. Come on, go. So we hope that you can join us for this amazing cause and we raise funds for the San Antonio brain tumor community. In other news this morning, Hollywood's striking writers in the major studios will meet for a fourth straight day today. In a statement yesterday, the Writers Guild of America confirmed to its more than 11,000 members that talks are going to continue into the weekend. After weeks of inaction, face-to-face -face negotiation between the writers and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers actually resumed this last week. The industry's writers have been on strike since May 2nd. Can you tell when you watch TV? Yep. Nothing really good on right now. Okay, President Joe Biden is planning on joining the picket line with auto union workers on strike in Michigan. Biden posted on social media he is heading to Michigan this Tuesday to, quote, stand in solidarity with the men and women of UAW as they fight for a fair share of the value they helped create, end quote. The nonprofit group Students for Fair Admissions is suing the U.S. Military Academy at West Point for its race-based admission, admission, admission policies. According to the lawsuit, the group argues two white males plan to apply to West Point, but due to the Academy's admissions process, they would more than likely not be accepted. The plaintiffs are asking the court to find the Academy's use of race admissions unconstitutional. Back in June, the Supreme Court ruled that colleges and universities could no longer take race into consideration as a specific basis for granting admission, except for U.S. military service academies. Currently, West Point requires a percentage of each class to be filled by minorities. CDC advisors say a maternal vaccine for RSV could be available soon. Studies show that the Pfizer concoction provides babies with protection from the moment they're born. Currently, RSV hospitalizes more U.S. infants than any other disease. The panel's recommendation isn't quite unanimous with one advisor who voted no. A pig heart has been transplanted into a living human recipient for the second time ever. The surgery was done at the University of Maryland Medical Center by the same transplant team that performed the first experimental surgery last year. 
A 58-year-old Michigan resident deemed ineligible for a traditional transplant with a human heart by several transplant teams. So he received the heart this week, says he's currently breathing on his own. And as doctors say, his new heart is working well without any help from supportive devices. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, that's, that's strange, but it's also amazing. Yes, science today. All right, 637 and 79 degrees. Today on Texas Eats, David Elder visits the Pearl to try a giant Texas-sized chicken parmesan. Yum. Ooh, that's pretty giant. <laughs> okay, or if corn is more your style, you won't want to miss this story. So meteorologist Mia Montgomery takes us to the Reba corn maze. That's after the break. A couple of weeks ago, we told you about a local farm with a corn maze honoring the great Reba McIntyre. So naturally, had to go check it out. That's right. Mia Montgomery, our meteorologist, went to Yensky Orchards in Fredericksburg and tried it out. Yensky Orchards has a new corn maze theme here in Fredericksburg this season, and it is all about Reba McIntyre. We wanted to check it out and see how long it would take us to get through the corn maze. So let's go. See, I forget that it's a maze. You never know which way to go. Oh, we did make the wrong choice. Here we are at the corner. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. What, are we in the R? Andrew, look, R. It literally makes an R. Look, Andrew, this is it, this is it. We got it. Yes, we've got it. Okay, we're on a roll. We're in the music note now. All right, we have made it to the bridge, which is in the heart of the maze. This is a checkpoint, and you can see out over the entire corn maze in the orchard, so it's really pretty. We are just about 15 minutes in, so we still have a lot of ground to make up. Okay, so I think we are here at the entrance to Reba's face and her hair. We need to get on the most northward path. So then we walk down here, and this will lead us to the X in Texas. To stay at the bottom. We know if we stay at the bottom, we'll be able to get all the way through. Okay, so we just made it through the south side of Reba's hair on the maze. We are at 29 and a half minutes, and the end is right there. Not too bad, it actually was kind of fun. If you want to check out and brave the Reba corn maze or just check out what all Yensky Orchards has to offer this fall, we've got those details up at ksat.com. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. We used to watch that show, Reba show, all the time. She has a song called I'm a Survivor. Yeah, um, Mia's a survivor. And Mia survived. I'm in the She's south end of her hair. <laughs> Can you imagine Reba being like, there is a maze? She probably. She'd probably love it. Yeah, probably. It's cool stuff. Didn't yeah. she on it? What? Didn't she like? What is it? Um, never mind. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's show. go ahead and oh, I, I, I think so she's on the. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> got yeah, it. Got it. it. <laughs> Somebody else has showed it, not us. Here's something familiar, though. Heat high. Heat high has moved back over Texas, and that's why we're going to be tempting the triple digits today and tomorrow. Forecast officially calls for a high of 99 but it's gonna feel hot anyway. So that heat high is making it hot all across Texas, including here in San Antonio. Our weekend forecast calls for a high of 99 today, heat index of 103, 99 tomorrow, heat index of 104. It's just gonna be downright hot. There is, however, a low pressure system and a cool front working its way across the central plains. Now we're not going to see strong cool air from this front, but it is going to allow for at least a chance of rain in our near future. First today, though, severe weather expected from Oklahoma City through Tulsa, Kansas City, up into Iowa. They will likely see some tornadoes, perhaps even some hail and damaging wind gusts. Meanwhile, here in South Central Texas, by tomorrow evening, this is a look at five o'clock, there will be a couple of isolated storms across the hill country, perhaps even as far south as Kerrville, but it's likely going to stay dry in San Antonio tomorrow 
tomorrow all day. Again, 99 and hot for your forecast tomorrow in San Antonio. Then as that front washes all out, there will be a couple of pulses of energy in the atmosphere and allow for slightly better rain chances by Monday. We're talking about 40% chance in San Antonio. The healthier of the rain is going to be up near San Angelo, but it is a possibility. Again, 40% on Monday. So when you look at rain chances in the coming days, no chance today. Small 20% chance tomorrow, mainly in the hill country. 40% chance on Monday. Again, that's not a guarantee for rain. That's going to be scattered showers and storms. A few will get rainfall. Most of us will miss out. Outside right now, it is 79 degrees all across San Antonio at the airport at Stinson at Kelly at JBSA Randolph. 79 degrees. Winds are pretty breezy from the south at about 10 miles per hour. It's 73 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Catula where it's 80. 79 in Pleasanton. 79 in Gonzales. It's 81 already in Del Rio and 81 in New Braunfels. A little bit closer to the metro area. Rio Medina, 72 degrees. Bernie Stage, been waking up in the 60s the last few mornings. Not today. It's 73 degrees in Bernie and it is humid. Dew points are in the mid 70s and it's at the absolute top of the scale. You feel the humidity as soon as you step outside and that humidity is going to factor into a heat index today. 78 at 7, 81 at 9. By lunch, it's already going to be in the 90s and already going to be feeling like it's close to 100. And then this afternoon, forecasting 99 degrees for the high, feeling like 105 all around San Antonio and South Central Texas. Our average high this time of year is 88 degrees. We are going to be much hotter than that. It's going to be 99 in San Antonio, 102 in Del Rio, 102 in Catula, 99 in Beeville, and 98 in Canyon Lake. Another hot one tomorrow, 99. Again, only an isolated shower. And then a small chance for rain on Monday, 40%. But hey, at least the forecast calls for cooler weather in the week ahead. Not necessarily cool, but cooler than 99, which is good. Low 90s for the high for most of this upcoming week and less humidity, too. So those mornings will feel really good. Anything but average all summer. I know. Anything but That's average. Sick. Our hottest summer on record. The most 100 degree days on record. Are we in El Nino yet? We are about to be in El Nino and El Nino weather pattern really doesn't affect the summer that much. It more so affects the winter. So and the spring. So okay. we'll see if we can get a little bit more rain from El Nino. Oh, we need that. We rain. absolutely need it. Thank you, Sarah. It needs to show up quick. Yep. <laughs> 647, 79 degrees. If you need some fuel before head for the Cure 5K, today David Elder takes us to the Pearl for a giant chicken parmesan. So we do a little bit differently here. We do a beer batter. So we use Shiner Bach beer and we create like a flour. We go in flour into a beer batter, back into flour. So it's a little bit like a bread press, but almost like a beer batter as well. And it's <laughs> massive. It's a 16 ounce Yo, portion. This gnarly. That is insane. Yeah. That is a big piece of chicken. Mozzarella melted on top, San Marzano tomato sauce on the bottom. And look at the inside, just beautiful. Yep, boom, hey, cheers. cheers. Oh, wow. Yeah, baby. That's yeah. a double fist bump. That is incredible. Oh, man. That's that, incredible. You better be hungry if you're going to eat that. Okay. <laughs> Unlimited breadsticks at Olive Garden isn't working anymore for older people. As a restaurant is seeing a decline in the 65 and up age group across all their restaurants, and it's the same at Cracker Barrel. During the pandemic, baby boomers had to eat meals at home, and in the following years, they've continued to do so. Cracker Barrel CEO says inflation may be impacting the 65 and older group. Meanwhile, Darden Restaurants, which owns Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse, and others, has also seen a drop in older customers, but there has been an increase in younger clientele. Oh. I don't know, those breadsticks are pretty good. David hasn't left. <laughs> I'm not 65 yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, Did fall. I shock you by not being 65 or something? Oh, I love you, David. Okay, <laughs> fall is here, 
and that means it's time for bonfires, flannel, and everything pumpkin spice. The start of fall, more technically known as the autumnal equinox. Oh, I got to say that. Ooh. That's the precise moment at exactly 1.50 this morning that the sun is directly over the equator. It usually falls between September 22nd or the 23rd each year. If this Texas weather allows it, grab the cozy blanket. Uh, uh, probably not. Not anytime I'm soon. Sweaty. Cooler temperatures are on the way <laughs> at some point, but not today. Not today. But here's a look at some upcoming events this fall for you and your family to enjoy. So today, the Sun Drop Springs Festival in New Braunfels starts and goes through October 31st. It brings a fall corn maze, pumpkin patch, and a pumpkin trail. Parktober Fest starts tomorrow from 2 to 5 p.m. celebrating German heritage with live music, food, and free beer tastings for the adults. And Big Red and Barbacoa Festival returns on October 7th through the 8th. For more information on any of these events, head to ksat.com. If you're a fan of the so-called Skeleton House in Stone Oak, beware. They have a new address this year. The family moved into a new house across the street. Oh, wow, big move. <laughs> skeleton decorations. That tradition is going to keep going. The family has become well-known in the area for changing their skeleton display every day. Oh, this is like the family thing. This, is, this was hilarious. Yeah. They're... <laughs> They are so creative. You can get more about this story and see the pictures again on KSET.com. Can't wait. Can't wait to see what they come up with this year. Thank you, skeleton family. Maybe for they moved across the street to have a bigger yard and more skeleton maybe. family members. Maybe more, more skeletons in their yard. Yeah, their, their family expanded maybe. <laughs> be fun. More themes. It's 654 and 79 degrees. All right, let's see what's happening on Good Morning America. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, Tropical Storm Ophelia making landfall in North Carolina this morning, bringing up to six feet of storm surge and 70 mile per hour winds. Emergencies declared in several areas of the East Coast. We have the track and team coverage on the ground. And more on the historic auto workers strike now expanding to more locations and President Biden's plans to show support. Plus, super fan spotlight, one of Colorado football's biggest believers, the 98 year olds bond with Coach Prime and the next big challenge for the team against Oregon later today. That's all ahead here on GMA. Uh, kind of hard to, to believe that um, we lost him right around 10 years ago. His legacy and his leadership skills still resonate as strong now in that newsroom as they ever have. What can I say about the man that literally changed my life? Had it not been for Jim Boyle believing in me, I don't know where I would be today if I'd be even sitting here. Yes, of course, he cared about the on-air product, but he also cared about me, and he wanted me to be the best I could be. Once again, today is our annual Head for the Cure 5K to raise money for brain cancer research. As you can tell, it's in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who passed away 10 years ago. Online registration now closed, but if you want to come out and join us, you can still do it. You can register right there at Providence Catholic High School. It starts in just a couple of minutes at 7 o'clock. Race starts at 8. Every dollar raised is going to go towards brain cancer research. So we hope to see you there. By the way, in in uh, I think nine, the first nine years, $860,000 we've wonderful. raised, something like that. That Amazing. is wonderful. It is gonna be humid though out there this morning. Mm. It's 79 degrees, you know it's gonna be a hot day when you start off at 80. Basically today, 99 degrees for the high, 99 tomorrow, but the heat index will make it feel like it's closer to 100 degrees. It's Tonight, it's football it's games. Make sure to uh, stay hydrated because it's going to be 95 at kickoff halftime right around 90 degrees. Looking ahead, again, close to 100 tomorrow, but by the week ahead, our temperatures are going to come down in the low 90s, so not all that bad, closer to seasonably average, but still not feeling like fall inside at all. You better go across Head the street. Out. See you down there, Providence. See you guys back here at 8 a.m.
You are looking live downtown San Antonio at Providence High School from Drone 12. We are just moments away from the 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K. Our participants are all lined up and they are ready to go. So we're going to get this thing started right now with our countdown live right here on KSAT 12. So here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. That's the best part of the countdown right there, is the horn. Once again, you are looking at this live right here on KSAT 12. It is our 10th annual Head for the Cure. We're going to be here all morning broadcasting live. Daniela, our newest reporter, is also here. She's experiencing this for the first time, so we'll be talking to her without the throughout the morning. We'll also be talking to the participants as they finish some great stories. We know there are some folks who are here because they have lost loved ones to this dreadful disease. We also know there are some folks here who are celebrating life because they've had friends and family that have survived this. So we're going to go both ways on this thing. We're going to be talking to those who are here to support those who are survivors and here to remember those who have lost. But it's a celebration today. We are celebrating lives either way. So once again, it's a little warm out here. So Sarah Spivey is now going to give us an update on the weather and let us know if these people need to like get out of here quick, maybe do their fastest time, Sarah, before it gets really hot and humid. Absolutely, David. It's already humid outside. Temperatures are in the upper 70s, 79 degrees, but take a look at that number. 88% humidity, 75 degree dew point. You know, fall officially started last night with the autumnal equinox. It is not going to feel like fall at all this weekend. In fact, we're going to be close to the triple digits. Good morning in Holotus. We're at 77, 80 in Castroville, 80 at Simpson, 81 already in New Braunfels, 75 in Kerrville. Here's your weekend forecast. I know it's not a pretty one. 99 degrees today, 99 tomorrow. Heat index value any from 102 to 106 degrees throughout the afternoon today and tomorrow. A lot of people are going to be heading to football games tonight local high school football games it's still going to be hot at kickoff 95 degrees sunsets close to 7 30 and it's still going to be 90 at halftime hey it's not all bad news i do expect temperatures to be a little bit closer to normal throughout this next week and we'll talk about a chance for rain too sarah erica thank you sarah let's take a look outside with drone 12 there it is oh, look at them go they're off i think they're walking i think a lot of these are, oh some are walking running hey there's a good mix 79 degrees out there we have this is our head for the cure 5k happening right across the street from our studios uh we have stephanie cerna running justin's out there as well uh, yeah there's a uh, yeah. katrina weber was out there okay yeah i know uh, several of us are out there including our news director mario um so yeah it's a great group this is the 10th anniversary of that we've done this race all in honor of our late news director jim boyle and we're going to be taking live shots out there throughout the morning and it's expected to be a busy weekend at the border where a constant stream of migrants are expected over the next few days that's according to the mayor of Eagle Pass, the city where many of those asylum seekers are entering the U.S. Some are crawling under razor wire to reach American soil. Outside of the Migrant Resource Center here in San Antonio on San Pedro Avenue, buses continue to arrive bringing migrants. Over the last two days, dozens of migrants sitting and waiting to figure out next steps. Some residents have dropped off water, juice, and clothing to the Migrant Resource Center, while others around the corner from the center say they've had trouble sleeping. Governor Abbott announced yesterday that more buses are headed to Eagle Pass and El Paso to move migrants out of the, quote, overwhelmed community since April of 2022. Texas has bused thousands of migrants. The latest group arrived in Los Angeles yesterday morning. Now to another KSAT community event happening right now. With flu season just around the corner, University Health is hosting multiple free drive through flu shots events for you. The first one is going on right now at Freeman Coliseum. It goes till noon. Doctors at University Health recommend you get the flu shot now before the season starts next month. However, it's important to mention that just because you get the shot doesn't mean you won't get the flu everybody to have appropriate expectations of what the influenza shot does, the flu shot does, right? So it is not 100% effective in preventing people from getting sick with influenza. The second flu shot event is in October. You can read more about the events by heading to our website, ksat.com.
Okay, let's check back in with David Segears, who's live at this year's 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K. And David is joining us again with KSAT's Daniela Ibarra, who is actually experiencing her first Head for the Cure race. How's it looking out there, guys? Uh, it's, it's kind of barren. <laughs> there's nobody there's nobody here They're everybody's all gone they're yep. all out there running so no that's great it's great we've had uh, nearly probably over 750 runners today we've already raised over $63,000 so Daniela your first impression as you were walking down the street and came through that start finish line with all these people that are I lined mean, up to go the thing that was just going through my brain is wow like there's so many people here and all of them have shirts that you know represent different people and I know we talked to a couple of runners who are running in honor of someone it's just really special and I think that's the thing it's always in honor of somebody who has either passed away mm -hmm. who celebrate their life and we also celebrate the ones who have survived so there's some families out here who uh, who brought their survivors surviving spouse or yes. parent or or family member with them today or friend so that it's good to see that that we that we cover both ends of the spectrum that there's yeah. a lot of celebration going on here today yeah one of the men i was talking to he had a shirt that said i survived cancer i beat it and he says he wears it every time he runs and he on his bib had the name of a 10 year old who's currently fighting brain cancer so he said this is just doubly special for him that's what it's all about here at providence and they have taken off we expect that the person who's actually going to finish first will be here in the next few minutes. Doesn't take long to run the 5K <laughs> for some of these runners, but uh, we will be here throughout the hour, and she's going to be talking to a lot of the story, a lot of the folks who have some great stories to tell about the ones that have been lost and the ones that have survived. So we'll be here throughout the hour for that, and we will actually be right back after this commercial break. All right, fall officially started. Last night with the autumnal equinox, which happened after midnight, it happened at 1.50 in the morning. So believe it or not, it is fall, even though it doesn't feel like it outside at all. The autumnal equinox is when the sun is directly over the equator. Equinox is Latin for equal nights. The amount of daylight does start to decrease, though, after the fall equinox. And here's the good news. The northern hemisphere, it's tilting away from the sun, which means eventually we will have cooler weather, just not this weekend. It's going to be 99 today and tomorrow. Our average high this time of year is 88 degrees. We're going to be about 10 degrees hotter than average in San Antonio. In fact, uh, close to breaking a record today for uh, this Saturday. As you look though ahead, you can see that temperatures do moderate a little bit. We'll be getting into the low 90s. So it's again, it's all about finding the positive in this dreadfully hot forecast, right? It is going to be hot and humid though today. 79 degrees outside. You can see we've got mostly cloudy skies at the moment. South winds at 10 miles per hour bringing in that humid air from the Gulf of Mexico. Dew points are in the mid 70s right now. Good morning in Rock Springs. It's 72 degrees already 80 in Del Rio, 80 in Catula, 79 in Pleasanton, 79 in Gonzales and 81 in New Braunfels. And again, the humidity, it's all about the humidity this weekend. It's actually going to make it feel even hotter outside because dew points are in the mid 70s. That is at the absolute top of the humidity scale, oppressively humid outside. So as you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, just make sure to stay hydrated. I mean, we have seen 74 100 degree days this year so far. We're used to this kind of heat. 84 at 10 noon, 91 degrees. By the afternoon, we're going to get up to 99 degrees. All it'll take is one measly degree for today to be 75 100 degree days. It's possible, but I'm forecasting 99 this afternoon for the high. Even at 8 p.m., it's still going to be 92 degrees. I mentioned that, uh, again, forecast high around San Antonio Airport is 99 degrees, but you go to Castroville, it'll be 100, 100 in Seguin at New Braunfels, 95 in Bernie and Bulverde, 98 in Lost Maples, 97 in Kerrville. And again, the humidity, this is what it's going to feel like outside anywhere from 100 to 105 degrees out there. Feel like 105 in Uval Uvalde and Sabinal. Feel like 106 in Seguin and New Braunfels. 107 in Floresville, 101 in Kerrville. Okay, let's talk about the weather setup. That big blue bully, that heat high, has moved back over Texas. That's why we're dealing with the high heat, the high humidity. But to our north, across the central plains, there is a low pressure system that is going to 
push aside this heat high, but unfortunately this cool front behind it is not going to be bringing us that crisp cool fall feeling. Instead, temperatures are going to fall into the low 90s. Now that front will be near us enough by Monday to allow for some scattered showers and storms, but again, a 40% chance for rain is not a guarantee for rain in your backyard. The chance is about 40%. At least temperatures are going to come down in the low 90s with less humidity by the end of the week, and that's the silver lining in the forecast. Coming up, we are going to talk about the tropics. Tropical storm Ophelia has made landfall. Details ahead. Sarah, thank you. The 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K run and walk is underway, raising money for brain cancer research and honoring those who have passed away from the disease. The race here in San Antonio, dear to our hearts, Sarah, as it was launched in memory of our beloved KSAT News Director Jim Boyle, who passed in 2014. So many runners already crossing that finish line. Well, maybe, I don't know. It's That'd still, be really fast. There are some really <laughs> fast people out there. Let's check back in with David and Daniela. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So you talked about Jim Boyle. He's a special member of our KSAT family, and we actually have his daughter here with us, Erin Boyle Dempsey. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm happy to be here. So this is not your first Head for the Cure by any means. <laughs> I've been to most of them. Some of them I haven't been able to go to because I'm in Austin, um, but my sister always comes and represents, and um, my mom's been to a bunch, and it's great to be back, so. Yeah, and so a lot of our KSAT family have the shirt that you're wearing. Yeah. What does it mean to you to have that shirt on? Well, it made me really happy to walk. Um, we were coming in as some people had already started running, and I saw a lot of Team Boyle shirts, and it just makes me happy that people still think about him and um, that everyone's here today. It's really nice. Yeah. So when you're going to be walking 3K, I mean, what's running through your mind? Um, I like to see... I like to see everybody out supporting um, the brain cancer community. So it makes me happy just that everybody's together for this short period to uh, bring awareness to such an important cause, because it really is a devastating disease. So I'm so glad people are able to be here and support the cause and spread awareness and um, remember their loved ones in the process and support their loved ones. So it's good. What do you think your dad would think about this? I think he would think it's awesome. I think he would like it. I think he would be running it. I'm sad I can't run right now, um, but I'm going to walk it and think of him the whole time. Well, thank you so much and good luck. I know it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of really, you know, people supporting the people that they love. So good, I love seeing all the familiar faces. It makes me happy. So glad to be here. Thank you so much. And we'll be checking in with you throughout the race. Send it back to you. Daniela, Aaron, thank you so much. It's yeah, 815 and 79 degrees. And we'll be right back. Well, first, we're going to take a oh, look over <laughs> with, race with Drone 12. Drone 12. OK, so this is a 5K. It's 8.15. I think this is definitely in the middle of it all. Right, right. I think, you know, I know one year uh, Justin Horn actually won. Yeah, he ran it in like 25, 27 minutes. He, he won so in his I, age group. So yeah, so maybe he's finishing up right now or close to. It's 8.16, so. Stick with us throughout the morning. We're going to have live coverage of our Head for the Care 5K. Uh, kind of hard to, to believe that um, we lost him right around 10 years ago. His legacy and his leadership skills still resonate as strong now in that newsroom as they ever have. The 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K run walk already underway. Many people come together to run this race to spread awareness about brain cancer, along with raising funds for brain cancer research. KSAT's David Sears has been out there live and has been talking to some runners. David, how is it looking out there? Well, we're starting to see some of the runners filter back in. We expected expected this pretty quick so but right now we're going to talk to the guy who runs the l juice bar this is andrew andrew has been coming here for how many years now andrew uh this is my fifth year uh at the head for the cure of all the places you could be why do you pick this event to come here on this saturday well to be quite honest with you dave um five years ago i lost my, I lost my sister to cancer and uh what better way you know, to be a part of something special and give back to the community. It's not always just about receiving, but it's also about giving back to the community and being a part of something bigger. So what do you think about this event? Oh, man, I think it's great. I think Providence has done a great job, KSAT, everybody, all the vendors. I think it's a special, and I think it um, it's something that people need to be aware of and know about and continue to give 
two ahead for the cure. Is this kind of a way to celebrate your lost loved one, though? Absolutely it is. It's keeping her memory uh, alive and uh, knowing that, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of health and wellness in our lives. What would she think about your uh, your juice bar? Oh, man, she would be, she'd be pretty excited, man. She was, uh, she'd be really happy and... Um, you know, I, not a day goes by that I don't miss her because I'm in this food truck in honor of her. But it's great to come out here and see these families and other, pe other people from around the city and the state coming together to, for a good cause. What was her favorite drink from your juice bar? Uh, you know what? She really liked the Rojo, the one that you just tried. You, tried, you know, we'll try it again. Is this it right here? Yeah, that's it right there, brother. Now what's in this place? This is going to have beet, carrot, and ginger. Oh, uh, this is healthy. <laughs> super healthy, uh, but it's, they say healthy is a new wealthy. Healthy's a new wealthy. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why, maybe that's why I'm so poor. All right. Well, let's try this. Okay. That's healthy. That's healthy. That's how I can describe that. That's, that's some healthy stuff. Thank you, and thank you for coming out here for the last five years and participating in this. I know it's a, it's it's a pleasure for us to see you here every year. It's great, to, and and it, it's healthy. So we appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, guys. All right, Andrew. Once again, been here for five years, bringing the. The El Juice Bar. I told you this stuff was healthy, didn't I? I said we don't have any of that fake, sugary, all that unhealthy stuff out here today. No, this is all healthy because we're all running today. All for Head for the Cure. We'll be talking to some of those runners as they come across the finish line here in just a few minutes, guys. Back to you. David, thank you. What a wonderful story. Yeah, and that was great. I love that he tried the juice. He tried it. It's healthy. It's healthy. <laughs> Well, it's been an emotional and physical journey for a Pleasanton mom who lost her hands and feet because of an infection days after giving birth. It's an incredible story. So we first introduced you to Christina Pacheco last year. Her body went into septic shock, which is the most dangerous stage of sepsis. And September is Sepsis Awareness Month, and our RJ Marquez caught up with Pacheco to see how she's been doing. Awesome. Every little um, victory that I've done, my son has been proud of me and happy. Every small step is a big victory for Christina Pacheco. The Pleasanton mom and wife has gone through months of intense rehab after she went into septic shock last October. I knew this was going to be really hard and it wasn't going to be easy. Christina had just given birth to her second child, a baby girl named Amelia. Doctors discharged her, but her body started to shut down days really later hard. and she was rushed back to the hospital. The infection ultimately cost her both hands and feet. That's not an easy thing to hear. And, you know, the first thing that popped into my mind is I am a mom. How am I going to be a mom if I can't use my limbs? Being a mom is what motivates Christina. Doctors gave her less than a 10 percent chance to survive. It does make me emotional, like when I think that I couldn't have. I could have died and not been here for my babies. She returned home three months after her limbs were amputated, reunited with her babies and family. Did you have a good day? Yeah. You had a good day. Look. You're so pretty. He still is my chicle, is what they call him, because he will not do anything without mama. She's still getting used to her prosthetics and getting back into a daily routine. Yesterday I wasn't able to hold a bottle and feed her. Oh, today I am able to do that. So, you know, it's just little things, little victories. She's also back at the office, working as a school psychologist with her family away from home. There wasn't a week that they wouldn't go bring me cookies or snacks or, you know, just for the cheese man. <laughs> the work cheese man. It kept me, it kept me going. The support from her husband Jacob, parents, family and friends has been incredible. There was times that I just wanted to give up or, you know, days that I was just like, I can't, I can't today. But she's not going to give up. A saying outside her home reads in Spanish, mañana será bonito, which means tomorrow will be beautiful. It's her mantra to keep pushing. I did survive and I am here and, um, you know, trying to do my best for my babies and set an example for them. God saved me not only for um, my babies and my family, but, you know, to help other people. Reporting from Pleasanton, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. We are with Bob Cottrell. He just finished the race. Did pretty well for Bob's numbers, right? You got a 20, 21 minutes? 21, 24. 21. And I'm 63, so that might be well, up there. You go. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Now, you're from Colorado. You've come down here for a family event, but you decided to run. Why did you decide to come up here and run today? You know, just to start to get fitness that you can't get just in training. And I almost skipped it, but I'm like, let me go get that fitness. Uh, and since I've been here, there's a family, Roberto Gutierrez's family. 
They gave me their their uh, bandana. Greatest people. This is it's very emotional here. I don't know that I've even thought about that. So, well, we appreciate you coming down. We appreciate you running with us, and uh, good job on the time. Twenty one. 21. There you go. All right, guys, back to you. That's what it's all about right here. People even from out of state coming in, hearing about it, and wanting to be a part of this emotional day. And it is emotional, as Bob said. Back to you guys. Amazing. 21 minutes. That's, I, I'd still be out there. I wouldn't be running. I'd be walking it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Well, it's now 8, 26, and 80 degrees. Let's take a look at our drone 12. That's at the finish line. So I'm sure and we'll start seeing some more. We're going to start seeing people trickle in. Not everyone's running at 21 minutes, minutes. like that young man <laughs> was Good came in on. Yeah, no, this is, this is, I mean, it's, it's hot out there. It's already 80 degrees outside. Humid. Oh, I'm waiting, oh, for, just, another one I'm just waiting for Justin Horn to come in. He's pretty quick. And Stephanie Cerna, also one of our runners, pretty quick as well with her daughter, Rooney. Hey, we're going to be checking in on Head for the Cure 5K throughout the morning. What can I say about the man that literally changed my life? Had it not been for Jim Boyle believing in me, I don't know where I would be today if I'd be even sitting here. Yes, of course, he cared about the on-air product, but he also cared about me, and he wanted me to be the best I could be. So it's stuffed full of uh, smoked cheddar cheese, scrambled eggs. The outside of it is a red corn tortilla and gluten-free panko. Everything that goes into our deep fryers here is gluten-free. Oh, nice. So it's got that crispy golden crust around it. The uh, the ranchero sauce is our version, and we drizzle with some fresh creme fraiche and uh, cotilla cheese and cilantro. All right, the chili relleno out here at Phoebe's. Cheers. Cheers, guys. That's a bite. Oh, come on. Welcome back, the 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K Walk Run. It's finishing up, and we know that some of our very own, like Justin Horn, Stephanie Serna, are done with the race. Yeah, that Daniela is joining us now. Daniela, you have some of our case hat? You got some any of it, Any of Mike? Mike, I see Mike. <laughs> yeah, he's right here, and then of course we have Justin Horn and Stephanie Serna. They got their medals. Yeah. So Stephanie, how did it feel to run? Well, um, it was very humid, as, as Justin will say as well. Uh, but, I mean, you have a lot of people running out there, and you know that everyone's running for a good cause, so that kind of lifts your spirits. Uh, but, yeah, it was a, a good turnout again. I mean, who, who were you thinking of when you were running? Well, of course, our, our late news director, Jim Boyle, who you know passed away from brain cancer. He's, you know, in front of mine. And, and also six months earlier, when, you know, when we lost Jim, I, I lost my dad to, to cancer. So, you know, it's a reminder of how many families are affected by cancer and brain cancer in general. Yeah, it's personal for you. And then, Justin, I know you finished a little bit earlier. You, you just got your breath. It's hot. I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, there's a lot of runners mad at Sarah and I. And listen, I, I tr we try with the weather. It's just not working out. Summer is not being good to us. You couldn't use your weather wizard powers? I, I tried, but you know, this, today's supposed to be the first day of fall, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know. So how did it feel to run? And who were you thinking of? Good. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't too bad, and it's like Steph said, it's such a, a cause that's near and dear to us. Our, our former boss Jim Boyle, and then you know I was out here last year, and I met the sweetest lady named Dina, and I found out on uh, a little bit later, earlier actually earlier this year, that she passed away from brain cancer. So this race is so important to us, and uh, I'm, I'm glad we're out here to support it and everyone. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Go catch your breath. I know it's hot. It's your fault, but <laughs> all right, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Daniela. Um, love seeing everyone come in. Yes. Uh, now it's time to like, you know, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. We have Mike out there, our case yes, mascot, Mike and David Sears. David, what's going on? You have some more runners. 
Yeah, we guess we have more runners coming across the finish line. We uh, are joined by two who just finished a second ago. This is Erica and Lauren, and this is Calvin. We'll get to Calvin in just a second, but this is, you said, this is your first time running. You live in San Antonio. What brought you out here today? Uh, so uh, my brother-in-law shared this with me, um, and he let me know that this was a cause for brain cancer. Um, and uh, a year and a half ago, we found out that my mom had brain cancer, so it was just a great cause for me to run for my mom. So, so this is personal? Yes, this is personal. Yes. And Lauren, you came out here to run with your friend and give her some support? Yes, my best friend. I know the mom. <laughs> I'm very close with her, so she's fighting really hard. She's getting amazing treatment, so anything we can do to help the cause, we're going to be here for her. Of course, that's why we're here today, to raise money for research. How important is, is the research, even as far as your mom is concerned? Yeah, extremely important. important. Uh, science has come a really long way, and it happens because of the people out here raising money for that. Um, so it's just incredible what the treatment is nowadays. And Lauren brought Calvin along with her. So who ran with who? Was he leading or were you leading? He was right alongside me. Sometimes he wanted to trip other people, so I had to keep a close eye on him. <laughs> but he does good. <laughs> now, does he run in a lot of marathons, or is this his first one? So this is his second 5K. We ran um, eight miles last weekend because we're training for the half marathon. So I think, oh, six miles, I'm sorry. <laughs> six miles last weekend. He did really good, but he was really tired. <laughs> How you feeling, Calvin? Huh? How you feeling, buddy? Are you worn out? You gonna get a good nap today? He's like, I'm not sure about the microphone. <laughs> Tongue's hanging out. He's got his water. He's finished his water, so he's good. Thank you. We wish the best for your mom. Thank, Thank you all for being here and supporting this great cause. All right, back to you guys. Love seeing everyone out there, even our four-legged friends. And hey, you can still donate. Just yes. head to the Head for the Cure website, and you can make those donations if you weren't able to be out there in person today. Yeah, so that's up on our website right now, but it is now 8.38. Let's check in with Sarah, because it's a Sarah, little spicy out it's there. it's like salty sweat. Yeah. It's, it's like it's where pretty, you get the sweat lines. Yeah, it's pretty humid out there right now. And you know, hey, today marks the first official day of fall, and right on cue, Fall Elm actually leads the pack in our pollen count. Fall Elm is moderate, molds are low, and pigweed is low too. Take a look at the forecast for the day today. It is going to quickly become I'm hot. 84 at 10, 91 at noon, but it's going to feel like 100 already by noon, and that's because humidity is going to stay high today. 95 at 2 p.m., I'm forecasting 99 for the high, so we may not technically reach 100, but it's still going to feel like 105 this afternoon, and even by 8 p.m., 92 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick check of the tropics because I do want to mention that Tropical Storm Ophelia has made landfall in the North Carolina coast. It's expected to weaken over Virginia and eventually the Delmarva Peninsula by tomorrow. Ophelia is really just going to be bringing torrential rains to a good po portion of the Carolina and Virginia coast, including areas nearer to Washington, D.C. as well. Now, while they're dealing with too much rain, we're hoping for some rainfall here in San Antonio. Monday, we do have a chance for showers and storms. I'll have those details ahead. Sarah, thank you. One woman is in the hospital fighting for her life this morning after she was shot in the face. It's happening on the city's west side. San Antonio police say the shooting happened just before four this morning at a home near Kennedy Park. Police tell us a man's ex-girlfriend showed up to his home and got into a fight with the man's current girlfriend. So during that fight, police say one woman pulled out a gun and allegedly shot the other in the face. That victim taken to the hospital in critical condition. The suspect took off and police are working to identify her. Time now, 840, and it is still 80 degrees out there. We're going to take a look outside with live cam. I feel so bad for the runners this morning because... Just tell, look how humid. Uh, that humidity is just lingering. But next week, we're going to get some lower 90s. Sarah okay. Spivey will have our full weather forecast when we come back. All right, guys, I've been trying to get in the fall mood. It's so hard. But it's difficult when the weather I is I like cannot this. believe that you said that today is the... It, it, 
Yeah, last night we had the the fall equinox, so we're it's officially in so fall. It's so hot outside right now. Absolutely. Not just hot, but humid. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the reason why. We've got that heat high situated right overhead, and that heat high is what's cranking up temperatures for us this weekend. So today we're going to be at 99 degrees, and tomorrow 99 as well. Either way, the humidity is going to make it feel like it's in the triple digits. But we so far we've had 74 100 degree days this year, the most of any year on record for San Antonio. It is entirely possible that we could have 75 or maybe even 76, but I am sticking with my forecast of 99 degrees officially for the high. Thankfully, that heat high is not going to be too long lived, and that's because there is a trough of low pressure up across parts of the plains. This is going to bring some severe weather for areas from Oklahoma City to Tulsa to Kansas City up into Iowa today. Severe weather under the gun for severe weather in those areas. But for us in San Antonio, it's going to be hard for us to see a good amount of rain from that system. Now tomorrow evening, close to about five o'clock across the hill country, there will be an isolated shower or storm or two, perhaps as far south as Kerrville. That front is going to wash out. Some storms are going to develop in North Texas and then outflow boundaries from those storms could fire off a few additional showers and storms closer to San Antonio. Notice the words I'm using could closer to San Antonio. It, it, it's it's not looking like this is going to be a healthy rainfall for everybody across the Alamo City. So when we look at rain chances, 20% tomorrow, mainly in the hill country, 40% on Monday. Better rain chances, yes, but not a guarantee by any means. We still haven't gotten that one big rain event that's going to help to really alleviate the drought, and it doesn't look like that one on Monday is going to be it either. However, that is our best chance for rain in the next seven days, so keep your fingers crossed if you want some rain in your backyard. As we take a look outside with live cam right now we're starting to see temperatures get to 80 degrees it's 76 in hondo 81 in new Braunfels, 81 in gonzalez and 75 in rock springs temperatures again close to 80 around san antonio it's going to be a hot day you know it's going to be a hot day when you're starting off at 80 degrees and humid too dew points are at the top of the scale they're in the 70s it's oppressively humid outside so when we look at our case at 12 hour forecast partly cloudy skies at 10 84 by noon will be mostly sunny and already feeling like 100 degrees outside even though the thermometer will read in the 90s as we look ahead to this afternoon 99 for the high mostly sunny skies and a warm evening tonight if you have any plans uh, outside this evening it's going to be pretty toasty out there still 90 degrees by 8 p.m. looking ahead to the forecast 40 percent chance on Monday for an isolated shower uh, for a scattered showers and storms less humidity though in the week ahead and highs in the low 90s we'll be back with more news after the break Our Head for the Cure 5K wrapping up. They kick things off at 8 a.m. And I know our Daniela is out there. What is, what's, what's happening out there, Daniela? Well, people are crossing the finish line. I know we talked to a couple of our KSAT family members earlier, but finish line is over here. And, you know, every minute we see a couple of runners make their way across it. You know, people are out here, they're hugging, they're, you know, remembering their loved ones. A lot of them wearing shirts in honor of somebody that they lost to brain cancer. I know we've spoken to a few this morning. And then once they cross the finish line, they get these shirts. So this one's a blue one um, that a lot of the runners have, but this one, is a little bit different so it has you know kind of the same design on the front but on the back it says survivor and we've seen a couple of those out here survivors of brain cancer who you know say this run is really special we spoke to you know a lot of family members who have lost loved ones and they say you know when they're running they're just thinking of their loved ones you know they're thinking of how they can honor them but you know let me show you more of the things that are out here so we have a couple of booths out here we have different family members showing off um you know pictures of their loved ones we spoke with the gutierrez family earlier who lost him in 2017 to brain cancer and we spoke with his nephew who says that you know he does this every year because he wants to honor he, he calls him his tío so this is really special for him and this family so we have a lot of those families out here you know just honoring their loved ones and you know, reflecting and celebrating those who did survive. So we're going to have a lot more coming up after the break. But for now, here are the commercials. And that's a wrap for this year's annual Head for the Cure 5K to raise money for brain cancer research. Before we head to break, we wanted to share a big part of our why. 
why we here at KSAT are dedicated to this cause. Yeah, we support Head for the Cure in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who died of brain cancer. Here are some of the ways we remember the man who led our team for so many years. First thing I think of when I'm asked to describe Jim Boyle. Good friend. Quality journalist. Incredible leader. Trustworthy. Passionate and tough. Dad. He was just really great and always so encouraging. This past summer I lost my dad and uh, in the process of, of dealing with that loss, I remembered how in grief I still am over the loss of Jim Boyle. I took Jim's death very hard, personally and professionally. When he left us, it, it obviously stung us. I worked with Jim for quite a few years, and you know it was very sad when, uh, when he was uh, stricken. Uh, back in uh, 2013. He was a father figure to me. While my father was in Louisiana, I always had Jim. He genuinely cared about the people that worked for him. I remember him speaking to me about the balance between family and work. But also very truthful. When it came to, to covering news. He always offered advice. But he would always have something to say about how I could improve, how I could be better. When you think of old school journalism, you think of Jim, because he just personifies all of that. Jim was a awesome boss. And he was the ultimate news leader. One of the smartest journalists I've ever met. When he took over, we were fighting to, to be number two. And we finally worked our way up to be number one. And we, we stayed there, and, we, and we, to this day, we're still number one. But it was because of his leadership. The level of expectation that Jim expected. He was a very tough boss. He instilled hard work in us. Kind of like that tough football coach. He wanted me to be the best I could be. I know that so many of us who are still here uh, can thank Jim Boyle. I owe my career to Jim Boyle. I'm forever grateful for him for, for not only hiring me, but also helping me learn and grow. He literally taught me all that I know about reporting and journalism. Just I'm grateful for, for working for a guy like that. And we miss him. We miss him greatly, even now. Uh, you know, we all miss him here. He's greatly, greatly missed. But let me just say, Jim Boyle, thank you. Thank you for everything you did. We miss you here, Jim. I don't know if you can tell or not, but just got back from the 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K Run and Walk. It was great seeing everybody come out, and of course, we're continuing to covering it all morning. Now, there's still some people out on the street. They're taking their time. You don't it look is. sweaty oh, I don't? at okay, all. Good. You look great. He was like, oh my gosh, it's warm. I'm so sweaty. It's you, look, warm. you look great. You did a great job out there, David. The stories are just absolutely incredible. I loved your interview with the guy, the juice bar guy. Yeah. Oh, fantastic Amazing. stuff out there. So the race here in San Antonio, of course, near and dear to our hearts as it was launched in memory of our beloved KSAT News Director, Jim Boyle, who passed away in 2014 of brain cancer. Yeah, we we're also out there doing some uh, money raising for research so we can hopefully one day end this uh, terrible disease. Absolutely horrific. And of course, you know, like we were talking about, all the great stories were out there. Daniel Ibarra is also out there. She continues to cover it. I know some runners and walkers are still coming in. Daniel, Daniela. Yeah, people are still crossing the finish line, and we have Katrina Weber who just crossed it a couple minutes ago, and this is personal for you. It is very personal for all of us at KSAT because we lost Jim uh, in 2014. My brother died the same year of the same illness, but it does my heart good to see all of the people out here supporting this cause and helping raise funds and hopefully find a cure one day. Yeah, and so how many times have you run Head for the Cure? I think this is the third or fourth because we had uh, some time off during COVID where we didn't have the actual race. But I remember the first race, it was a much smaller event that we had here. And so to look around and see how this has grown and how many people are taking part, it's just amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah, and I mean, we've talked to a lot of people who have incredible stories and, you know, people are wearing their loved ones on their shirts. I mean, how does it feel to see that when you're running? Well, it's kind of bittersweet um, because it's, it's nice to see that so many people are here helping to support 
this cause, but at the same time, you know how much that hurts to see that person on their shirt and know that they're missing that person in their lives. And you have two people that you miss very dearly. Very much, very much so. Yeah, Jim, what a great boss he was. What a great person he was. And my own brother, he was my older brother. Yeah, that was, it was, 2014 was a rough year, but I'm so glad that we're here and that we have this event to help prevent other families from feeling, you know, what we feel. And honor those that we've lost. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Katrina. We'll send it back to you for right now. All right, Danielle, thank you very much. You know, that, that's just another story we hear about Jim. But, you know, we also interviewed a man from Colorado mm -hmm. who came down here and he decided he'd come run. And then he got associated with a family that was there. They asked him to run for, for their loved one. And so he put on their banner and, and ran. Love and, all the and he stories. really didn't even know what was going on until he started listening to some of the stories. And then he said, man, this is an emotional morning. Yeah. This, is, this is a great thing. So uh, that's, that's the kind of people that show up and do this. So it has been a great morning. And it is now. 9.02 on Saturday, September 23rd. Also the official first day of fall. So yeah, the fall equinox happened last night. And so magically the heat goes away. We just experienced beautiful pumpkin spice. Every no, it's going to be hot this weekend. All weekend long, we're going to be close to 100 degrees and humid outside too. Take a look outside right now. Nice to see the sun there, except it does mean that it is going to get hotter. Take a look at the clouds and temperatures. Starting to see those morning clouds break up. The this morning. It's 80 degrees in San Antonio, 78 in Bulverde, 77 in Kerrville. Good morning in Comfort, where it's 77 degrees. Already 82 in Castroville, 83 in New Braunfels. Here's your weekend forecast for you. Yeah, it's hot. 99 today and 99 tomorrow. Will we hit 100 degrees for the 75th time this year? It's entirely possible this weekend. Don't forget, though, that as you're heading out and about, make sure to stay hydrated, especially tonight. If you're going to any of those local football games, high school football games kicking off at uh, 7 o'clock, it's still going to be 95 degrees by sunset uh, around 730. We are going to be seeing temperatures still well in the 90s, and it's going to be a, a mostly clear evening with south winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's not all bad news, though, with the heat and humidity. In fact, we do expect temperatures to come down in the week ahead, and there is an opportunity for some to get rain. I'll have those details in just a few minutes. David, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. The migrant crisis stretching from our southern border all the way to New York City. ABC's Jacqueline Lee is in Texas, where the Secretary of Homeland Security is set to meet with the President of Honduras. This morning, Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas and Honduras President Xiomara Castro will visit McAllen, Texas, the two discussing ways to reduce irregular migration. This comes after the Biden administration authorized 800 additional troops at the border and granted nearly 500,000 Venezuelan migrants temporary legal status so they can work. He wants to be a nurse, but he could only make five bucks a month. ABC's Matt Rivers spoke with a 21-year-old from Venezuela who spent the last three months traveling hoping to earn money to send back to his mom who has tuberculosis. I'm saying the economic situation is so no bad in Venezuela. You, you can't eat beef, you can't eat uh, chicken. In Eagle Pass, Texas, the mayor says the recent influx of migrants is the largest he's ever seen. Like Jimmy, who traveled alone for months to get to the U.S., hoping to make pizzas in Denver saying he has seen people drown and die along the way. A Mexican train company resuming operations after temporarily shutting down some northbound trains after half a dozen migrant deaths were reported. Drone video showing migrants still making the perilous journey, standing on top of trains, hoping for a better life in the U.S. Multiple cities across the U.S. now feeling the ripple effects. In L.A., dozens of migrants arriving on buses waiting to be processed. New York City overwhelmed with migrants for months, updating its policy, issuing 30-day notices to adult asylum seekers to help them reach their final destination in transition to alternate housing. In Chicago, the situation's so bad, the surge of buses bringing migrants into the city, forcing them to sleep on the floors of police stations. Once again, that was ABC's Jacqueline Lee reporting. In your morning headlines, a potential government shutdown looming over us as an asteroid is headed to Earth, somewhat, and a huge jackpot up for grabs tonight. That's right, and special guest Erica Hernandez in studio to tell us all about it. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. This is different. Weekend mornings. I'm, I'm loving Welcome. it. Welcome. I'm, I'm good energy. It. Yes, great energy. Let's get right into those headlines. As of yesterday, House Republicans have left D.C. for the weekend with no plan to keep the government from shutting down. 
House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has tried and failed to persuade a section of Republicans to approve a temporary funding plan to prevent a shutdown. The White House is now preparing to direct federal agencies to get ready for a possible shutdown. The House now has four days to come up with the plan. A piece of an asteroid is heading directly for Earth thanks to NASA. Okay, I hope I don't butcher this name. The Osiris Rex spacecraft, I think that's what it's called, yeah. Swings by Earth tomorrow and is set to deliver a sample collected from the asteroid Bennu. The delivery will be made by releasing a capsule containing literally nine ounces of asteroid rocks and soil from space toward a landing zone in the Utah desert. And you'll be able to see the drop. NASA is providing a live stream of the delivery starting at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, which is around 9 a.m. here. Now, there wasn't a big winner in Wednesday night's Powerball drawing. The lottery says the jackpot is now worth an estimated $725 million. That would be the eighth largest prize in the game's history. While no one won the top prize, two tickets, one sold in Texas, which was not me, took home $2 million each. The next drawing is tonight at 10 p.m. Sarah, David, you feeling lucky? Think you're going to get this one? I always play. I always well, play. Do you can't play? Win if you don't play. Right. Do you, we have a we have a pool here at yeah. work in our our case at bookie. <laughs> so nobody shows up tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow we won. <laughs> yeah. So he I'll come. be here. So I will show up to work. If you win? Even if I win, I will show up to work. I'm being honest, I will not. Good Sorry, well, guys. Sorry, guys. You got to make sure it's all right. I wouldn't good. be able to do, order, I would your, I would have to call in six. I'm going to say yep. I cannot do this job then I'll be here knowing that like that in the back of your mind I, they'd be like what's wrong with her oh I'm sorry I just won like 700 million dollars I just said I'd be here Monday I just, be here. <laughs> just want to just clear just make sure everything's good buy your tickets all right it's 908 81 degrees we are in for a special treat this morning as if we haven't had enough special treats case at anchor Ursula Perry shares her cheesy Cajun shrimp and grits recipe just in time for hopefully some cooler weather in parentheses. <laughs> yes. There are air quotes? Air quotes. Oh, I thought that was over. We'll be back. Okay, well, first, the solar oh, eclipse. Oh. Just a few weeks away after the break, we'll take a look at how you can view this rare astronomical phenomenon. And once again, outside with live cam, we know there's still some folks finishing up the race. The clouds are out there, but that's not stopping the humidity or the temperature from going up. Might be a little more comfortable. At least the sun's not beating down on you right now. Sarah Spivey's Get Your Forecast coming up.